Hi, welcome back to another episode of Easy Peasy Labeling with me, Melissa. Today I am super excited to show you just a basic rundown of the label editor software. Now this is our software that is free for download, never any license fees, and is compatible with all of our PX printers that work with the PC. So this program has a ton of capabilities, but today we're just going to go over the basics, some of the features of the program, and just a general overview of some of the capabilities that it has. Now, I've already launched the app. So this is the main screen that you're gonna get when you first launch the program from your desktop. You're gonna see this new open screen. Now there's a lot of different capabilities on this screen, so let's just kind of start looking at them. Right off the bat, you can see I've got my printer selected here, and then underneath that it's showing me a quarter inch tape. Now that's not actually the tape that I have in my printer. So I could either click on the drop down and select it from the list, or I can hit the get tape with button and that will read my printer and tell me what size tape I have in there. So I'm gonna do that. I have a one inch tape in there and you saw that that was reflected. I also really like this um, because it tells you right off the bat if your printer and the software are communicating. Usually if it's not, um, it's just something simple like, oh, you forgot to turn the printer on or you disconnected the USB and didn't plug it back in. But I like that I can find that out right away instead of when I'm ready to print. So another little tip there. So now I feel like most of the time you're gonna go ahead and just click horizontal text. You're just gonna free form start typing in the information that you want. So if you want that, you can just select horizontal text in the general here, or maybe vertical, whichever orientation you want, and then just start rocking and rolling. But there's a lot of other features in here too. So if you save labels, um, the open will show you a host of some of the most recent labels that you have saved um, and access them. Of course, you can browse as well. If you know that um, they're not showing up there, you can browse to wherever they're saved on your label and then, or excuse me, on your computer. And then we do also have this label catalog. Now this is basically a database of labels that are already created. So there's a whole bunch of different applications and then within each of those applications is um, several pages of labels. Now any of these can be printed exactly as they are or you can edit them, make changes, adjust whatever you need to, add information, take information off, and print them accordingly. You can see that I can search, I can narrow it down and search for different tape widths. Uh, I can change it to different printers because some do have some different templates based on the sizes that they're capable of doing. And then I can also set some as favorites. So if there's favorites that I go back to and use a lot, I can certainly set those as favorites and recall them that way. So lots of capabilities in here but let's go back to our new open okay so we talked about the general this is just going to be for general text whether i want it horizontal or vertical i can also access our mixed length from here let's keep looking so then we have our office category this equipment management also has a couple of templates basically for doing asset management type things so check that out if I know right off the bat that I'm going to be importing information from a spreadsheet, Excel, something like that, I can go ahead and just go right to that from here. And I have either import horizontal or vertical just based on which orientation I want my label to be. And then scrolling down further, I have the cable labeling settings. Now these are going to help you design some of those more detailed labels for things like patch panels, punch blocks, wraps, things like that. So that's where those are. We'll cover those in another video, but that's where you can find those if that's what you're looking for. Now you'll notice I do have two features down here that are grayed out and that's the self laminating and the heat shrink tube. Now the printer is smart. I already told it to read tape and it knows that I don't have a self laminating tape or a heat shrink tube in there. So it's not showing me those options unless I have one of those tapes in. Um, now, fun fact, if you're using the heat shrink tube, you can use this feature or you can just use general, whichever way you prefer. It's really, there's not a huge difference for that particular application. All right, so let's go ahead. We're just gonna start at the basics today. I'm just gonna click on horizontal text and we're gonna go into the main program. 
Now, you'll see here, this is the main screen of the program. So you'll see it's kind of a paintbrush style program. You've got your label in the middle, and then you have all the things around it that you can add to it. So let's take a look at the different um, sections of information that we have here. So first on the uh, right hand side toolbar, we have the printer selection, same as we did on the others. Um, I also have again the tape selection. So again, if I'm printing multiple labels and I wanna be switching things around, I can certainly do that manually here. Um, sometimes I make templates for a label that I don't actually have in my printer and share it with somebody, so you can do that too. Um, again, that get tape with button is here as well. Then we have our alignment. So again, I kind of repeated things, some of the things that were on that new open screen, just to give them to you here for convenience. So if I want to toggle between horizontal or vertical text, I can do that. Next is our tape length. Now the default for this is going to be auto length, just like with the standalone printers. So what that means is that it's going to default to making the text as long or as short as it can given what I type in. So if I type in hi versus happy birthday, it's going to make it the appropriate length. Okay, so that is the default, but of course there's always scenarios where you want it to be a preset length. So I can do that, I can click on it, I can select manual, and just set it to whatever length I want it to be. Okay, so again, I can use the up down arrows, or I can just use my keypad and type in whatever I want. I can either hit enter or tab and get away from it, and you'll see that it has now reflected that on my label. So next is the margin setting. Now this is the area before and after your printed label. Some would say the wasted space before and after your printed label. Now you can see it's going to default to making it the smallest, but I wanted to show you this. So watch the label on my screen. As I make the margins bigger, I had already set my label length to two and a half inches. So if my margins are bigger, it's not going to make my, my label any longer. It's just taking away from my printable area. Okay, so that is our right hand toolbar. Let's move along to the blue toolbar along the top. So of course you see your things like your file, new, edit, save, stuff like that, right? Undo. Um, but the thing that I really like in this toolbar and what I think, <clears throat> excuse me, you would use the most is this layout feature. So there's a whole bunch of different options for kind of the design element of your label. So you can control the block order. I can align elements on my label with each other as well as on the label. So if I want them all centered on the label or maybe I want them centered with each other. So you've got some options there. I'll show you a little bit more of that once we get some stuff on our label. Um, lots of capabilities here and then we just have you know our get tape with feed tape boring stuff. Okay. Last but not least is our toolbar on the left hand side and this is all of the things that you could put on your label all the stuff okay so starting at the top obviously with text so I can choose if I want it to be horizontal text or vertical text sometimes that does you do actually want it different than the orientation of your label so you can select that here uh, we can do drawing, so if I want to do straight lines or freeform boxes or anything like that, we can do that. This is going to allow me to import, so if I want to import my company logo or certain specific symbols that we use, something like that, you can do that here. Next is our symbols library, and I'll show you what this looks like. We do have a pretty extensive symbols library, so you can see we've got a whole bunch of different categories, and then within that category, I can see all of the different symbols within that category. Lots of stuff in here. So check those out. I typically find usually what I'm looking for is in there, but if not, again, you can certainly import that. Okay, so let's keep going. That was our symbols. Next is our borders and frames. So this is really gonna step up your label, bring up that professionalism, or maybe make it a little bit fun if you wanted to add something fun to the labels. I personally like this wood grain one. Um, there's some fun stuff in here, but then there's also some more basic, just is gonna make your label look nice or um, bring it, give it that professional touch, finish things off a little bit. Moving along down is our barcode and QR code options. We do have several different uh, formats that are available. So to access them, you just click on the little arrow, select the format that you want, and it's going to let you bring up your barcode information. Okay, same thing with the QR codes. You can choose the different format and then it'll let you enter that in. 
Moving along down is our date and time stamp. So often I see with maybe like calibrations or safety checks, things like that, you want it to be tagged with a date and time stamp. So I can certainly set that up so it'll automatically do that. You have some options for when it's going to update that or when it's going to change the date and time. Um, and you have some designer uh, template format options for that as well. We can cover that in another time. And then moving along down the line is a table. Now, some of these are included in some of those templates that we talked about, the equipment management or the label catalog. But if you do want to make a more advanced label, often I find it's nice to kind of section some things out. So you can do that with the table. La uh, second to last is our alphanumeric sequence. So you can set up some pretty advanced sequences with this feature. I have no doubts that you could open it up and set up a simple sequence and rock and roll. But we'll go into that a little bit more in another video because you can do some kind of a um, little bit more advanced things with that. So really cool feature. Um, check that out. And then last but not least is our import. So again, you could do that on the new open screen, but um, for whatever reason, I still always do it this way. I guess I'm just stuck in my old ways that I'm usually in the main program and then go to import. Either way is totally fine. Um, and then you can just select import. You can browse to your spreadsheet and go ahead and pull that in. That's going to work with Excel files. I find CSVs to be um, a little easier sometimes, especially when you're dealing with numeric fields, because sometimes Excel wants to try to think what it's what that numeric field is going to be and add dollar signs or decimal points or things like that. So um, if you're wondering or you have uh, wondering about formats for that, CSV is always good, but standard Excel files will work as well. Now, if you have any questions about the software, its features, or anything like that, feel free to reach out. I would be happy to help you or answer any questions you have. There will be more coming, so check back for more videos. Like this one, subscribe if you'd like, and we will see you another time. Thanks!